हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस सेशन इज क्विक रिविजन फॉर स्टडी ऑफ पावर डिवाइसेस आई हैव ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड अ डिटेल्ड वीडियो ऑन ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक डू रिमेंबर दिस इज अ क्विक रिविजन सेशन इन व्हिच आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू द इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट्स रिलेटेड टू ईच एंड एवरी पावर डिवाइसेस एंड सर्टेन ट्रिक्स टू मेमोराइज सर्टेन इक्वेशंस और सर्टेन प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन so first part is scr scr stands for silicon controlled rectifier from the exam point of view you may expect the question like this draw the construction uh, of scr and explain its operation with the help of two transistor model of scr so this diagram shows the construction of scr as shown in this diagram there are four layers p and p n and there are three junction j1 j2 and j3 quite simple j1 junction is between upper p and n j2 is middle n and p j3 is for lower p n junction there are three terminals anode terminal cathode terminal and gate terminal this is called unipolar device because flow of current is from uh, is along one direction like a normal diode this is called a control device because the current which is flowing from anode to cathode is controlled by applying signal at the gate terminal so it is silicon controlled rectifier this is the corresponding symbol anode terminal cathode terminal and gate terminal now about the two transistor model this diagram shows the two transistor model first is transistor q1 which is pnp transistor this is transistor q2 which is npn transistor see this is the basic uh, diagram if you divide it into in terms of two transistors that means if i will consider this part as one transistor it will be pnp transistor then second part if you consider this group npn it will be treated as transistor q2 now simple analogy look at this diagram this is emitter terminal base terminal and collector terminal of transistor q1 this collector is connected to base terminal of transistor q2 along with this there is a connection of gate gate terminal which provides gate current so for smaller amount of gate current it will be getting added with collector current from q1 and this transistor q2 basically transistor is an amplifier so this will amplify the signal so you are getting more collector current it is again connected to base of transistor q1 so again transistor q1 will produces a larger value of uh, collector current it will be again getting added with ig and uh, it is provided to the base of q2 likewise the positive feedback is generated and amplification action uh, takes place now next is the iv characteristics that is current versus voltage characteristics rather it is anode current versus anode voltage characteristics uh, from the exam point of view aap logo ko kuch terms yaad rakhne jaise this is the reverse blocking mode see we have to apply positive connection to this anode terminal negative connection to this cathode terminal then we will say the scr is forward biased if you apply the reverse connection negative and positive to the cathode terminal then you are getting this region which is reverse blocking region this particular part up to certain value vbr this is due to the reverse leakage current so after a particular instant breakdown voltage there will be breakdown of this uh, uh, device and this region is called reverse blocking region in which scr will not be in conduction mode next is if you are applying this is positive uh, positive connection to anode a negative connection to cathode scr will be forward biased but up to certain voltage say vbo break over voltage this is called forward blocking mode means scr will be forward biased but it will not start conducting do remember the basic things scr will start conducting when you apply whenever you will apply the gate pulse so you need to apply the gate pulse after that scr will be turned on it will start conducting let us say at this point we are we have applied the gate pulse so this particular region indicates the forward conduction region this part is called forward blocking mode and this particular current is the leakage current in forward blocking mode now two important uh, terms one is 
IL that is latching current it is minimum all state current required to keep SCR in the conduction अगर ये diagram में दिखाना है तो this will be IL then holding current IH it is minimum anode current below below which SCR stops conduction मतलब somewhere here you will be getting value of IH below which SCR will stop conduction next is series and parallel connections of SCR from the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What is the need of series and parallel connection and explain static and dynamic equalization circuits. So it's a very simple concept. If you want more voltage, like in case of electronic precipitators, uh, high voltage is required. In that case, a single SCR is not sufficient. So many number of SCRs are connected one after other that means they are connected in series as shown in this diagram this is called a series connection whereas whenever the requirement of current is large for example in case of battery chargers there is a requirement of heavy current in that case SCRs are connected in parallel so this is the diagram simple diagram of parallel connection in case of parallel connection, this is the total current I through individual SCR, the currents flowing are I1 and I2. Now first we will talk about this series connected SCRs. In this case, the voltage at I have shown 3 SCRs, SCR number 1, 2 and 3. The voltage across each SCR is denoted by VL, whereas the total voltage, combined voltage across the total series connection is string voltage VS. Now, there are two types of equalization circuit. Why equalization circuits are required? See, whenever you are connecting SCRs in a series, then ideally the voltage rating is same, but there practically there might be slight differences. So, we are providing RS, we are connecting RS in parallel with each SCR as shown in this diagram. It is called static equalization circuit for the series connection. In this case, the resistance RS provides uniform voltage distribution in the steady state condition. Just say when I have steady state condition, mein, har ek, uh, SCR ke across the voltage is the same. Hona so, to maintain this value equal, uh, this resistance RS is connected in parallel with each SCR. This is called static equalization circuit. Next is parallel uh, dynamic equalization circuit. See, this this upper part, which I have blue ink, se bana hai, this is same as the series connection. It means this series equalization ka part. Hai. This lower part is for dynamic equalization. In this case, we are using RC circuit, resistor and capacitor. And in parallel with R, we are connecting a diode. Same thing is applicable for each SCR. So, R and C, that is resistor and capacitor, they are used to protect against the high dV by dt. Do remember like this, D by DT means rate of change of hold, V, that is voltage. So, R and C combination protects against high rate of change uh, of the voltage against SCR. Diode D is used to limit the DV by DT across SCR. So, this is the major function of this diode. This is called dynamic equalization. Next is parallel connection. Just now I explained whenever heavy current requirement is there, we need to prefer parallel connection. In this case, the current I1, I2, then if you are using one more SCR, I3, every current uh, will be getting combined to form the total current I. So more amount of uh, more current is obtained at the output. The problem is that the current capability ideally of each SCR may be same but practically if due to any reason the current flowing through SCR gets increased then it will increase the junction temperature of that particular SCR and if it exceeds than the specified value then the SCR may be damaged. This is the disadvantage of parallel connection. Next is GTO that is gate turn of thyristor. Almost it is same to that of SCR or thyristor. Only slight differences are there. Before this, let me tell you what is a commutation. Commutation means switching of SCR. So one technique is natural commutation. That means <coughs> naturally SCR will be switched off. Another is used in case of GTO that is called forced commutation. So this is the symbol in which I have shown extra connection 
basic concept is in the forward condition it is same to that of scr whenever you want to switch off the scr i mean whenever you want to switch off this device you need to apply the negative pulse at the gate terminal of this device due to application of negative terminal hum logo ne two transistor model uh, discuss kiya hai same two transistor model is applicable for uh, gtu whenever you are applying negative pulse at the gate terminal it will drain out the excess current from both the transistors q1 and q2 and scr will be switched off typical turn on time is 1 millisecond which is same as that of scr but turn off time is very very less compared to the scr turn off time of gto is 1 to 2 milliseconds whereas in case of scr it is uh, typically 30 milliseconds this is the iv characteristics it is same in the forward region iv characteristics is same as that of scr in the reverse condition earlier we had drawn the diagram like this for for scr whereas due to application of negative pulse early turn off of scr i mean early turn off of this gtu this device takes place this diagram shows the constructional details of gtu so it has n plus region then p plus n minus and p plus region n plus region are uh, uh, grown on this device as shown in this diagram and two connections are uh, taken out from this upper n plus region which gives us the cathode terminal from lower p plus region we are taking out anode terminal and this uh, connection gives us the gate terminal so this is about the gate turn off thyristor next an important device power mosfet we know that mosfet is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor this is the symbol of power mosfet it has three major terminals gate terminal drain terminal and source terminal this diagram shows constructional detail of power mosfet it consists of p type of substrate and two n plus regions are grown on this substrate three terminals are taken out uh these are metal connections so this terminals corresponds to source then gate and drain terminal simple logic between source and gate we are applying vgs this is the voltage source vgs between source and drain we are applying vdd this connection this voltage is vdd now there are uh, different modes of rather two important modes of operations first when vgs is equals to 0 that means we are not applying any gate voltage we are not giving any pulses at the gate terminal but we are connecting vdd in that case the device will not be in conduction mode because for the conduction of this device there must be certain channel which should be formed between source and gate so jaise maine bataya vj zero so there won't be any conduction conduction if you apply some positive vgs then and as you go on increasing this vgs vdd is already applied you are applying a uh, vgs and you will go on increasing the value of vgs in that case this p type of substrate which contains certain number of holes as well as certain number of electrons observe the connection carefully you positive terminal because of this holes will start getting repelled from this gate terminal बिकॉज ये पॉजिटिव टर्मिनल और पी सॉफ्टवेयर में जितने होल से ओरिपिल हो जाएंगे एंड ऑन द कॉन्ट्री नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन दिस पी टाइप ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर विल गेट अट्रैक्टेड टूवर्ड्स दिस गेट टर्मिनल बिकॉज दिस इज द पॉजिटिव कनेक्शन दिस विल फॉर्म द डिप्लीशन रीजन एज यू फर्दर गो ऑन इंक्रीजिंग दिस वीजीएस देन इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दैट मीन्स नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग this will form a channel between these two n plus region this is n type of channel because of which the conduction of device starts this is the way how this power mosfet operates now there are two important characteristics first is the transfer characteristic which is graph of drain current id versus vgs there is one particular value there is one particular level which is called vgs t t stands for threshold value if vgs is below this threshold threshold means certain reference value if vgs is below this threshold value device won't be conducting 
once you increase vgs beyond vgst beyond reference or beyond threshold value the conduction will start like this this is the transfer characteristics next is output characteristic which is graph of id versus vdd there are three important regions one is cutoff region if the value of applied voltage is less than some threshold level device won't be in conduction mode that is called cutoff condition i have drawn three graphs for particular values of vgs that is vgs1 vgs2 vgs3 observe in case of every graph in the initial portion up to this dotted line in the initial portion irrespective of value of vgs the values of this id goes on increasing as you go on increase this vdd but this happens up to this dotted line this particular region is called ohmic region after that even if you increase this vdd id will not increase it remains constant this particular region is called active region of power mosfet next device is igpt that is insulated gate bipolar transistor as the name indicates the gate terminal is insulated and it is basically combination of mosfet and bzd so it has high input impedances like that of mosfet and it has a low on state power loss like that of bzt jaise maine bataya so both the advantages of mosfet and bzt are combined in this device which is insulated gate by polar transistor this is the symbol which consists of three terminals collector terminal emitter terminal and gate terminal when collector is positive with respect to emitter then the device is forward biased but the device will start conducting if vge that is gate to emitter voltage is greater than vget that is some uh, vge value above some threshold level t stands for threshold level so under the condition vge greater than vget the conduction start it is very much similar to that of uh, power mosfet like some channel is formed and because of which the conduction starts so i have not drawn the constructional uh, diagram just to save the time uh, but the it is very much similar to that of the power mosfet so this is about insulated gate bipolar transistor so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video